we started getting up every day, making tracks. Next thing you know, Ulrich was like, Ulrich came down that weekend. We started making tracks, and I played him like seven or eight of them we had already made. He's like, fuck, I, I don't want to miss all this. He moves back to Shelbyville. Oh, that's fire. <laughs> and we start locking in every day. Yeah, and this is what time? This is 2000. You're fired up right now. This was a happy time. Yeah, yeah like this is yeah. uh, 2010, yep. end of 2010, going into 11. Yeah, yep, gotcha. Meanwhile, kicking in Tennessee is still, mm-hmm. you know, yep. it's around a million. That was the crew foreman. It was Jay. That, that was like the Avengers for Smo. Like y'all, Smo and you and – O'Rig and Alex. So O'Rig was the DJ. Yeah. Me and Alex were the hype men and obviously, you know, supporting Smoke. So then we had Travis Tidwell playing guitar. So then we ended up putting the band together and then now we were going on the road. So we'd be on the road for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come back Sunday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and sometimes into Thursday we're making music. Mm. I'm filming everything and I start editing it into the vlogs. Mm-hmm. So now we're putting up like little vlogs of what we had done that week. Right at this time, Dan comes back and's like, hey, man, we just got an offer from uh, Warner Nashville. We have to make sure we're on our game. The deal wasn't good enough when we turned it down, but they are watching everything we are doing. We turn all the way up. Now we're just like, oh, well, shit, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So now Put we're, on the gas. we are pumping. JJ was... Uh, you know, taking pictures, doing all the graphics, helping me with videos. You know, we're just a team. like Working. Working, 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 working. And then the second deal comes through, and it's acceptable, and now Smo is a Warner artist. Yes. So, honestly, at that time, I'm thinking, man, now they got access to every producer in the game. Like, we'll be yeah. lucky to get three or four, but I know we're still attached, and we're on the road and everything. But Yeah, but... But you know, I get they're, it. they're probably going to bring in some big guns. So one thing, though, was our advantage. We had access to smoke every single day. Yeah. So we just kept cranking. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So they start sending, uh, like, Bobby Pinson, I think David Lee, uh, Rhett Akins, and he brought Thomas Rhett. Oh, down. wow. Okay. So I met Thomas Rhett before he had Way before. Blow, blew up, yeah. which really honed my writing because I, I'm, these are guys, that it's like a formula. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, how does it transition into your pre choruses and choruses and the dynamics of a song and right. know, taglines and all these things? So, the label calls Smo, who want to do like they called it, a, it was like a showcase, but a Smo case. <laughs> right. So, yeah. they came out to the farm, the mm-hmm. whole label. I'm talking Chris Stacy and Chris Lacey, that they're the head, uh, the top AR and the the top radio guy at Warner at, at the time Warner at the time yeah and Esposito and they came out to Shelbyville to see y'all yeah the president of the label hmm. yeah plus all their interns all the executives that they could fit in the a label. bus and they came out to the to the joint the country yeah so we had our stage show down Pat mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying me and Alex on the side like Velociraptors crossing back and forth hyping you know slow mm-hmm. in the middle with the big baritone the Fucking band going crazy. O-Rig back there cutting in shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had a dope-ass live show. So we did a live show for the label. Yeah. We went into the studio, and Dan says a little something, then he turns the floor over to me. And I wasn't expecting it. He just put me on the spot. So I said a little something. You know, you guys, you know, got a great artist here. He's a great guy. We're a hard-working team, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Without further ado, I start pushing play. And I knew which one of them ones was, was them ones. So I, boom, mm-hmm. boom. Dude, by the third record, Espo, the president of the fucking label, is dancing around the studio like, whoever made these beats is a genius. The feels are fucking incredible. Yeah. We're going to get rich. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm looking at Obrick because, you know, me and Obrick did everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we're just like. And this was this was the was surreal, grassroots man. stuff? Got to be a fly on the wall. Uh, to it. This Just is to like, see you tell it, it it grassroots is out, and now we're like working towards the this first one. album, Country yeah, Living. Country Living. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay, I'm following along. So there. now the label's super excited. Yeah, and I'm getting and you've seen it. You've seen them excited at this point. Well, it's not just like he say, she say, or you're hoping they like it. The president, you saw the, the guy label, vibing out, saying we finna get rich. Vibing ain't the word. He yeah. was jamming. Hell yeah! Like 
and like calling us geniuses and all this yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a surreal moment for me that night. And it was cool because we had like the tiki torches and the lamps. Shout out tiki torches. So it was yeah. just like this vibe. Like I can't even explain that night because it was validation after 20 some years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like working like the moment you dream of happens. You know what I'm saying? Mm. 